Welcome to Learning with Lee, where we discuss nature and wildlife on Kiowa Island. I'm your host, Lee Bundrick, Land Preservation Coordinator for the Kiowa Conservancy. In the past few interviews, we have learned about wildlife in Kiowa with interviews from leaders of the Shorebird Stewardship Program and Kiowa Island Turtle Patrol. This week, in honor of Earth Week, we are going to switch gears and talk to the Conservancy's Educational Outreach Team Committee Chair, Sitting Perry, and Communications and Education Coordinator, Jennifer Woody, about the history of Earth Day and ways you can celebrate at home. Hi, Cindy and Jennifer. I'm glad you can join me today. Hi, Lee. Thanks for inviting me. It's good to be here. Hi, Lee. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Cindy, could you tell the audience a little bit about yourself and your background? I moved to Kiowa in 2009. My background is in educational technology and gifted education. After I retired, I became a trustee for the Kiowa Conservancy. Now I serve as the secretary and the Conservancy Educational Outreach Chair. Jennifer, could you also tell the audience a little bit about yourself and your time with the Conservancy? I moved to Charleston in February of 2003 and began working for the Kiowa Conservancy in April of that same year. So this is my 17th year working with the Conservancy. I have two sons, Tanner, 16, and Cooper, 13. We all love being outside. We enjoy kayaking, hiking, and camping, and most of all, we enjoy exploring the rich history, nature, and wildlife that Charleston and its surrounding areas have to offer. And of those areas, Kiowa is definitely one of our favorites. Cindy, could you provide us with the history of Earth Day and how it came to be? In the late 1960s, there was a lot of political unrest, mostly related to the hippie movement and the Vietnam War. There were Vietnam War protests in cities and on college campuses all over the country. In addition, there was a growing problem with rampant pollution, including a huge oil spill in Santa Barbara, California, that occurred in January 1969. This was the largest oil spill at the time. Another sad event occurred on June 22, 1969. The Cuyahoga River in Ohio was so polluted that it caught on fire. Randy Newman even wrote a song, Burn On, about this unbelievable tragedy. Who would have ever thought that a river could catch on fire? Apollo 11 and Neil Armstrong landed on the moon on July 22, 1969. And nine months later, Earth Day was born. Hmm. Back in the 1960s, Gaylord Nelson, a senator from Wisconsin, tried for years to pass environmental legislation, but he was not satisfied with his success. Frustrated, he had a new idea. It all started in September of 1969. Now, as governor of Wisconsin, Gaylord Nelson noticed how teach-ins were being successfully used in colleges. Teach-ins were designed to focus on non-academic topics and end with some sort of call to action. Governor Nelson proposed a teach-in to focus on environmental awareness, and he appointed 25-year-old Wisconsin native, environmental advocate, and student activist Dennis Hayes to organize the first Earth Day. It's interesting to note that in 2020, Dennis Hayes is still on the Earth Day board. The first Earth Day was on April 22, 1970. About 10% of the population of the United States participated in Earth Day events that year. Governor Nelson wanted the events and topics for Earth Day to come from local communities, grassroots efforts rather than from issues being dictated by Washington or some other central source. Some people think that is the genius. That's the reason that Earth Day has been so successful over the years. Local organizers focus on what's essential or critical in their own communities. 
A number of important environmental acts and initiatives came about in the early 1970s, including the Clean Air Act, the Endangered Species Act, the Air Quality Act, and the Toxic Substances Act. In addition, the Environmental Protection Agency, the EPA, was formed. To this day, National Earth Day organizers make suggestions for campaigns and offer toolkits to help spark ideas, but local communities still organize and self-select themes and actions that are appropriate for them. Over 190 countries and 1 billion individuals are expected to participate in Earth Day 2020, positive action for our planet. This year, due to the COVID-19, the focus has shifted from community participation events to digital events. To learn more about Earth Day, go to earthday.org. And that's my history lesson for the 50th anniversary of Earth Day. Thanks, Lee. Jennifer, can you tell us about the history of Kiowa Conservancy's Earth Day celebrations? 2013 was the Conservancy's first time holding an event celebrating Earth Day. Earlier that year, on March 5th, the town of Kiowa Island proclaimed the Conservancy as the conservation partner for Kiowa Island. On April 22nd, the Kiowa Conservancy held its first ever Earth Day celebration event with a groundbreaking ceremony in the soon-to-be Naturally Kiowa Demonstration Garden at Night Heron Park. The grand opening of the garden would take place in the fall of that same year. The Conservancy's 2013 Earth Day theme was Designing with Nature. The garden was designed as an educational tool for property owners to showcase plants that work well within Kiowa's varying environs and would provide habitat for a variety of native wildlife species. Those breaking ground included Kiowa Island Golf Resort President Roger Warren, Town of Kiowa Island Mayor Charlie LaPuma, Conservancy Chair Sue Corcoran, and Garden Host Committee Chair Edna Roberts. How did the Conservancy's Earth Day celebration evolve in future years? Well, Lee, the Conservancy didn't hold another Earth Day celebration until April 22nd of 2015. This Earth Day celebration, also held at the Naturally Kiowa Demonstration Garden in Night Heron Park, started an annual trend. The 2015 celebration focused on the importance of native plants and gardening for wildlife. Key topics included sustaining biodiversity through habitat-friendly landscaping, sustainable practices, the importance of understory, and bobcat research currently being conducted on Kiowa Island. The event featured our first native plant sale in a children's craft area hosted by the resort's Turtle Nest Art Studio. The following year, our Earth Day celebration was similar with a focus on wildlife-friendly landscaping. The 2016 event was expanded to include bird banding and monitoring research, as well as games for children. This year, the native plant sale was hosted by the Kiowa Island Community Association, and the children's crafts included building and designing a butterfly hibernation box. I understand that the Earth Day celebration reached a new level of excitement in 2017. How did the event change that year? In 2017, the Kiowa Conservancy celebrated our 20th anniversary, and we kicked it off in style with an Earth Day celebration themed around environmental stewardship. Attendees were encouraged to become citizen scientists, and the town of Kiowa Island once again proclaimed the Conservancy as the conservation partner for Kiowa Island. In 2017, we also hosted our first ever ladybug release in the Naturally Kiowa Garden. It was a new favorite for sure. But have you ever heard of ladybugs? No, I cannot say I've done that. Can you tell me a little bit about it? Well, I can tell you from experience, it's definitely not an easy task. That year we had 2,500 ladybugs to be released. They all came together in a small cloth pouch, and we had volunteers come into our office to sort them into small air-vented cups 
so that individuals could release them in the garden. The sorting was done early in the morning, and by the time it was finished, we had ladybugs everywhere. We were still rounding them up the following day. We learned a lot that year, and although ladybug herding is still a difficult job, I think our volunteers have a great handle on it now. <laughs> That's pretty funny. How else did the event change in 2017? We also included a flight demonstration from the Center for Birds of Prey and a farmer's market sponsored by Rosebank Farms. We invited local artists and photographers to come and display their works in the garden, and the Nature Center came out and offered some exciting hands-on experiences with their educational animals. We had a variety of new booths featuring volunteer and citizen science opportunities, including diamondback terrapins with local favorite Marilyn Blizzard, shorebird stewardship with the South Carolina Audubon Society, Kiwa Island Turtle Patrol, Charleston area beekeepers, and our very own Conservancy Garden Keepers, a volunteer group that cares for and acts as ambassadors for the Naturally Kiwa Garden. In 2017, we also added live music, face painting, and slides and jump castles for the kids. Wow, I'm not sure how the Conservancy could have expanded on that for 2018, but I bet it did. You are correct, Lee. In 2018, our Earth Day celebration theme was Bring Your Own Bag and Stop Plastic Pollution. Thanks to our many sponsors, the Kiwa Conservancy was able to print and distribute free reusable bags featuring our BYOB logo to all of the event attendees. The Low Country Marine Mammal Network, NOAA Marine Debris Program, and the Plastic Initiative Committee, Kiowa, along with the South Carolina Aquarium Citizen Science app, were added to our group of volunteer and citizen scientist opportunities. We learned about the benefits of reptiles in the landscape from the Edisto Serpentarium, and everyone enjoyed meeting new snake, alligator, and turtle friends. Roots and Shoots Nursery hosted the native plant sale, and in addition to previous year's children's activities, Charlie the River Dog came out to join in the fun greeting kids, adults, and snakes alike. That sounds like a lot of fun. Last year I was able to experience the Earth Day celebration for the first time myself, and I have to say it was pretty fantastic. Can you tell our listeners about the theme and changes that took place in 2019? In 2019, our theme was Protect Our Species, Protect Our Habitats. Once again, thanks to our sponsors, we offered free reusable shopping bags to all event attendees. This year, our friends from the South Carolina Aquarium Rovers joined us with their touch tank creatures. Conservancy trustee Roland Hoffman had a great time hanging out with a beautiful corn snake and diamondback terrapin from the Nature Center and educating visitors on the importance of these creatures. New to our growing number of volunteer and citizen scientist booths, were the Town of Kiwa Island Grow Native Program and Charleston Collegiate Outdoor Program. With the current pandemic and stay-at-home order, I understand the Conservancy had to cancel the annual Earth Day celebration this year. What are some ways the Conservancy is continuing to promote Earth Week and Earth Day this year? In response to this year's stay-at-home orders, we've added a number of digital programs, including this program, Learning with Lee. We have also added a Monday Morning Nature Connections video series. It features beautiful videos of Kiowa's wildlife and habitat set to peaceful music. No matter what the weather is outside or where you are located on Kiowa or around the world, our Monday Nature Connections are sure to start your week off right. We're also offering snippets of our Naturally Kiowa Pathways tours. Join us weekly and tour one of Kiowa's exciting pathways to learn about the history, wildlife, and habitats of Kiowa Island, or download the Travel Stories app and take a tour from the comfort of your own home, anytime. This week, we posted a children's book reading of Mimi's Adventures on Kiowa Island with local author Katherine Goodman Farley. If you missed it, visit our YouTube channel and watch it anytime. You won't be disappointed. We're also sharing some fun Earth Day videos from others, like the Lorax wrap that we shared on Monday, and designing the NASA Earth Day poster for 2020. That was a cool poster. 
it sounds like the themes of the Conservancy's Earth Day celebration have changed over the years. Can you tell me about that? That's true, Lee. As I see it, the main mission of Earth Day is to educate and celebrate environmental programs and actions. Annually, there is a global Earth Day theme, which is really more of a suggestion for communities around the world to use as a stepping off point. Each year, the Conservancy plans our Earth Day theme around educational programs and environmental issues that are important to our community. That tells us who to invite. Some of our themes have been designing with nature, native plants in the landscape, environmental stewardship, plastics pollution, and protect our species, protect our habitats. This year, our theme focuses on coastal resilience. We also want to have a festive atmosphere and include those that support nature and our environment in different ways. We are fortunate to have the support and participation of a variety of island groups, including the Art Guild and the Photography Club, the Nature Program, the Town of Kiowa Island Wildlife Research and Volunteer Groups, and other groups on and around Kiowa that help to preserve and protect our unique wildlife species and habitats. We enjoy offering opportunities to engage people of all ages in this outreach event and are looking forward to having some new and exciting additions to our event in the coming years. Additions like tent talks from local specialists, book reading times with the Johns Island Library, and new hands-on experiences in gardening with native plants. Our themes may change annually but our goal of promoting education and support for Kiowa's environmental issues remains consistent. What are some suggestions for Earth Week activities our listeners can do at home? That's a great question, Lee. By taking part in activities like picking up litter and planting native plants, we're making Kiowa and our world a happier, healthier place. Here are some opportunities we suggest adding to your Earth Day to-do list. Become a Waste Warrior. Join the South Carolina Aquarium Solo Sweep Challenge. It's a month-long challenge to reach the aquarium's goal of logging 1 million pieces of litter in their litter-free digital journal, a project of the South Carolina Aquarium Citizen Science app. A solo sweep is a litter sweep where social distancing is respected, and the sweep is conducted either alone or with the family or group you're distancing with. Check out the South Carolina Aquarium's website or social media pages to learn more about this exciting challenge. Make a commitment to use more native plants in your garden. Native plants are incredibly important to Kiowa's ecosystem. Native plants sustain pollinators and provide high quality food and shelter for native wildlife species. Using native plants provides added protection to water resources by reducing the need for fertilizers, pesticides, and irrigation, which can contribute to pollution through stormwater runoff. Native plants also provide essential watershed protection, helping natural aquifers recharge and serving as filters for water naturally flowing into rivers and estuaries, lessening erosion and flooding. And native plants are more resistant to saltwater intrusion from flooding and storm surge. You can also reduce, reuse, and recycle. Don't drink bottled water. Use a reusable bottle instead. You'll save money and reduce plastic pollution at the same time. Remember to take and use your reusable bags when shopping. Enjoy a good Earth Day read. Here are a few to try. Low Carbon Diet, a 30-day program to lose 5,000 pounds by David Gershon. Nature's Best Hope, a new approach to conservation that starts in your yard by Doug Tallamy. Bringing Nature Home, how You Can Sustain Wildlife with Native Plants, also by Doug Tallamy, and How to Give Up Plastic by Will McCullum. And finally, you can spread the word. Tell your friends, the more people who treat the earth well, the safer and healthier it is for all its inhabitants. Thank you for joining me today to discuss the history of Earth Day. Join me again next week for another episode of Learning with Lee.